Hey, I'm here to tell you about Alistair and regulation. Alistair is a type of regulation that allows different reactions in the cell to communicate to one another. And it's so important that it is sometimes called the second secret of life. And to understand what I mean, let's look at a process that we know, glycolysis. Glycolysis breaks down glucose to produce energy in the form of ATP. And there are 10 reactions catalyzed by glycolysis. And some of them are, have a very favorable free energy. So it's important for the cell to be able to tell some of those enzymes when to slow down or speed up. So when there's too much energy in the cell, ATP can be an in allosteric inhibitor of some of those reactions in the cell. And allosteric means the other site. So to understand what this means, let's look at an example that we know. When an enzyme, this enzyme is a circle, an enzyme has an active site and it can bind substrate at the active site to form the enzyme substrate complex. And the enzyme substrate complex can go to products. But in allosteric, the enzyme exists in at least two conformations. So the one that can bind substrate is the active form and catalyze a reaction. And the one that doesn't bind substrate or can catalyze the reaction is called the inactive form. And these two forms of the enzyme are in, can exchange between one another. And an allosteric modifier will bind to the other site. And in this case, we have an allosteric inhibitor. that binds to the inactive form and prevents the enzyme from catalyzing the reaction. And this is one type of allosteric enzyme. This type of allosteric enzyme has one active site, but you can also have allosteric enzymes that have two or more active sites. For example, we can have an enzyme with four active sites, and here I'm showing the inactive form, which does not bind substrate very well, but then there's also an active form, which does bind substrate, and it could bind, substrate could bind at each of these four active sites, which could then go to products. An allosteric modifier could stabilize the inactive form of the enzyme at the other site. So this would be an allosteric inhibitor and slow the reaction down. Or we can have a modifier stabilize the active form of the enzyme, and this would make the reaction go faster. So here's an allosteric activator. And each of these are binding at the other site, not the catalytic site. So these are heterotropic. But when you have more than two or more active sites, this form of allosteric is called cooperativity. Because when the substrate binds, it changes the affinity. And in positive cooperativity, it increases the affinity of the substrate for the site. So to see what I mean, let's look at phosphofructokinase. is an important enzyme in glycolysis because it's a unique reaction to glycolysis. It converts fructose 6-phosphate plus ATP to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate plus ADP. And it's allosterically regulated because it, the reaction it catalyzes has a large favorable free energy 
of minus 5 kilocalories per mole, and it's unique to glycolysis. So it's important for the cell to be able to tell this enzyme when to speed up and slow down. And in fact, when there's too much energy in the cell, the ATP, in addition to being a substrate, is an allosteric inhibitor of phosphofructokinase. So to understand that, let's look at the kinetics of phosphofructokinase. So here we see the velocity of the reaction catalyzed by phosphofructokinase at different concentrations of fructose 6-phosphate. And this can be described by the Michaelis-Menten equation, except that you have this characteristic S-shaped curve, which is what you see with cooperativity, with positive cooperativity. And remember, cooperativity is a form of allosteric. And these are non michaelis menten kinetics because of the S-shaped curve. And enzymes with positive cooperativity are more sensitive to substrate. And that sensitivity is described by the hill slope, which for positive cooperativity is greater than 1. So fructose 6-phosphate actually is an allosteric activator of the enzyme because when it binds, it makes the other catalytic sites have a higher affinity for the substrate. In addition, ATP is an allosteric inhibitor of phosphofructokinase. So when ATP is added, it stabilizes the inactive form of the enzyme and shifts the curve to the right. And what that does is for a given concentration of substrate, say we're here at 2 millimolar, it decreases the velocity of the reaction. So the allosteric inhibitor binds to a different site and decreases the velocity of the reaction. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is an allosteric activator, which we see here, F2,6-BP, and it activates the enzyme by stabilizing the active form of the enzyme. And you can see the effect on the velocity. So for a given concentration of substrate, let's say at 1 millimolar, the velocity of the reaction increases. So that's how allosteric enzymes can be regulated. So to summarize what we know about allosteric enzymes, we know that there are two types of allosteric enzymes. They can either have one active site, or they can have two or more active sites. And enzymes with two or more active sites exhibit cooperativity. We also know that allosteric enzymes have two or more conformations. an active form, which can catalyze substrate to product, and an inactive form. And we know that the allosteric modifiers bind to the other site, and can either stabilize the active or inactive form. There are homotropic modifiers. And these bind to the other active site. So these are substrates in positive cooperativity would be an example. And then there are heterotropic allosteric modifiers, which bind the other site and are not substrates. And both of these can be either activators, which stabilize the active form of the enzyme to increase the velocity of the reaction, or inhibitors, which stabilize the inactive form of the enzyme and decrease the velocity of the reaction. So that's it for allosteric enzymes.